tonight, the qualifying round continues. It began with 24 of the greatest robots in Gary's mod going head to head in the ultimate tournament, all with the goal of raising this trophy as the Bashbots champion. Previously, Firewave, Dataflow, GT1, and Tenderlove all smashed their way into the round of 16. Now, eight more robots will battle it out for the chance at winning the championship. It's the second night of the qualifying round. This is Bashbots, the qualifiers. Everybody and welcome back to Bashbots. I am your host, the Dominus Ignis, and we are gearing up for the second night of the qualifying round. Last episode, we saw four teams make it into the round of 16, and we saw four teams get sent into the wildcard rumbles. Tonight, we will see another eight robots battle it out for this trophy to etch their name in Gary's Wars history. Same as before, the winners will automatically move on to the next round, while the losers will have to fight again in the wildcard rumbles. Without further ado, let's send it down to the damn beaver to break down the first matchup of the night between Sparks and Catch. Well, on paper, this seems like a very open and shut case, especially when you look at that 25 kilogram disc that gives Sparks a terrifying 94 weapon stat. That's how being a virtual makes a tricky opponent for the newcomer of Catch, but they aren't out of this yet. With an incredibly well on the front, Catch could just weather the blows until Sparks kills itself, even if the front is very easy to catch. But hey, no matter how uh, this fight goes, we know one thing, Sparks will be flying. Ladies and gentlemen, it's robot fighting time! In the red square, from the United Kingdom, it's Catch! In the blue square, from the UK, it's Sparks! My strategy is going to be just take out the spinner as quickly as possible, and once that's out of the way, just flip until he dies. Okay, so we have the biggest blade in the competition, so the plan is just to see if we can maybe get him immobilized over the hazards, get a shot at his wheels. Well, I would be surprised if sparks don't fly in this one, but in what fashion, I wonder? Interesting, uh, rather mute first impact between the two machines there. And a little bit of a panicky flip there as well by Catch. Yeah, quite modest flips we're seeing all around so far, and modest spinner blows as well. Is Sparks just taking a while oh! to get off the speed? Well, that's a bigger impact! Has that taken out a wheel? from Catch. And that's one wheel loss. Oh, I said I didn't doubt the knockout power. Why would I have any doubts? Immediately Sparks with a big advantage now. Catch is just gonna have to gyro around, but nevertheless managing to somehow <laughs> trick Sparks into the core of the arena and onto the floor flipper. Oh yes, as long as it keeps moving outside of its circumference here, Catch isn't quite done. But if it gets caught, what's oh, happened oh. there? It's buckled! It's broken! It's being absolutely obliterated here by Sparks! There's absolutely no flipper left on that thing! Surely we're going to see a countdown time for the cast, but that was going to in! That's just rude! That's just nasty, Sparks! But, uh, why would we expect anything else? 
Oh, goodness me. Oh, we're taking the flipper for another ride. Would you like to help rebuild this robot and Sparks? Get down in the pits and help your opponent. If you're going to keep churning away at it. Finally, the referee coming in with some sense of relief for Cat. As it takes Aww. more and more impact. So we are still going. Ugly, ugly victory. Oh, but they're going to take that and advance to the next round regardless. Here we see there was a, a nice little flip from Catch. Not the most powerful, but it was downhill from there. The wheel was gone. The robot was getting recoiled away. Armour started taking itself apart. A couple of danger moments for Sparks, but it didn't matter in the end because once they got that knockout, they didn't know when to stop. Sparks gets the KO in a brilliant fashion, moving on to the round of 16 with one of the strongest performances we've seen so far. It's time for the second battle of the night between Deathstalker and Sea Devil. Alongside having the coolest name of the competition, Deathstalker comes to us from the most experienced builder out there as well, with a very unique design that could cause a few upsets, and they'll need to call upon every bit of that experience to be in with a chance of beating Sea Devil, with its powerful full body spinner translated into a scary 89 weapon stat. However, Deathstalker's control stat is also 89, so this battle could be closer than anyone might expect. Ladies and gentlemen, it's robot fighting time! In the red square, from the USA, it's Deathstalker! In the blue square, from the USA, it's Sea Devil! His spinner takes a while to get up to speed, so first things first, I'm going to close the distance, get my wedge underneath him, drive him to the wall, and pin him there, and then bring the arm down to deliver the sting. So my strategy is to go around the side and try his, try and break his arm so that he can't really grab on him. His shape really is circular for grabbing, so I'll be dead if he grabs me. Well, Deathstalker, with all the experience in the world, but all the novelty as well in that design, should be fun to see how it does against the more traditional design of Sea Devil. The Sting is what Deathstalker wants to deliver, and it's a far start from it too. Can it calm down this old sea devil that is this full body spinner? And is it going to be spun over? Oh, just about saves itself there. A very hectic opening period there for sea devil. As it just about gets away from Deathstalker's wedge again. And it knocks it aside. Also managing to deliver some critical shots to the side weaponry of Deathstalker here. I think we might be in danger of losing one of those if it takes another direct impact. It can't seem to line up a forward drive at the moment. No, it can't. It's swerving and swinging. Now opening itself up to an attack there, and it was a really solid blow from Sea Devil, who seems to be pacing itself better. It seems to have settled into this fight better. Nearly got close to the arena wall there, which would have been trouble for it. Deathstalker can pin it up against there, but in the center of the arena, Devil will be liking the space it has, and another hit to one of those arms. With the amount of spinning that Deathstalker's doing in the centre of the arena, you'd think they were the full body spinner. <laughs> they just need to mount a, a move in a in a straight direction. Could we breathalyze this man? I think he may have been having a full night out before this. And Sea Devil somehow the more controlled machine, but not delivering its own impact either until that glancing blow at best. Whoa! Narrowly avoiding the poor flipper too. Yes, um, oh no! Is this the sting? No, no, because it's Deathstalker who can't seem to line up anything. But now Sea Devil's panicking and it's starting to retreat. Deathstalker swings, Sea Devil comes in again, and that's a, I call it, it's some kind of impact, I guess. 
And uh, as this fight trickles on, Sea Devil is grinding out points here, and Deathstalk is just coasting its way to a defeat. It needs to do something drastically. I think the only death that it's stalking is its own here, as they just keep coming in for more punishment. They're, they're doing an okay job of lifting Sea Devil into the air with that wedge shape, but they're taking damage in the process, and Sea Devil is hardly getting flipped over or anything. They're kind of running away with this they one. Are, and, uh, although Deathstalker is holding up to the hit, we thought those arms would be susceptible to falling off. The machine itself just hasn't been able to make its design count against Sea Devil. And, uh... Oh, it has got it close to the arena wall here, and it's landed on top of the arm there. Oh, well, interesting moment, but again. And why did we have faith? You know, the strength listed for this robot Deathstalker was the most experienced driver in the competition. You wouldn't believe it as it goes to a judge's decision. Surely there's only one way that can go. Experience, maybe. Logic, not so much. Certainly the more logical design we saw from Sea Devil as it came in with its horizontal spinning blades. Beautiful colours as it brings its arms around into the death that is stalked out of the arena. The judges' results are in. The winner by unanimous decision is... Sea Devil! Winning on an extremely close judge's decision, Sea Devil moves on to the round of 16, while Deathstalker will have to fight again. It's time for our next fight of the night, between Connection and Spinny Boy. Well, 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 isn't this a turn up for the books? Looking at the robots aside, you expect Spinny Boy's last weapon to absolutely decimate that cluster bot, but, but those stats tell a completely different story. With Connection holding the advantage in every start, and also taking it closer to uh, Spinning Boy re reveals a weak drive chain and exposed wheels, the advantage heads straight into the upper core of Connection. However, they do have some weaknesses of their own, especially their weak armor, so if Spinning Boy can drive well and hit the mini bots where it hurts, it still has a chance. I mean, I mean, after all, no one can predict what's actually going to happen in the arena. Apart from one thing, it's going to be utter chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, it's robot fighting time! In the red square, from the USA and the Netherlands, it's Connection! In the blue square, from the USA, it's Spinny Boy! Alright, so me and Doyle's plan is to go for Spinny Boy's wheels and hope we can uh, knock them off, divide, and just try and keep hitting the wheels. That's our best bet of winning. Okay, so my strategy is to basically not let them get to my wheels. As long as they don't get to my wheels, I should be able to win this. So both halves of Connection will have an obvious target to go for here, but will Spinny Boy be able to overpower the lighter machines with its big spinner? So, the question, can Spinny Boy disconnect the connection of these cluster bots? Well, you can see the target immediately. They're rushing in and trying to come up both flanks. But the poorly armoured cluster bots have both lost half a wedgler each, I think. Interesting. Not only that, I think Connection has actually landed some direct hits on those very weird wheels of Spinny Boy and failed to rip them off. A bit of a lack of power being demonstrated there. I think it's right behind in the V-shape and losing <laughs> dollar bills off the back of it by the looks of it. I think they're going to need to put in a slightly more concentrated effort if they're going to be profiting off this battle. Yeah, safe to say that. Uh, Spinny Boy's hovering around a little bit. It doesn't look the most mobile. And uh, Connection, you'd fancy them to come in for an attack of their own, but 
I can't really describe what's going on here. It's a lot of bouncing and not a lot of attacking. And both the cluster pots have fallen over <laughs> now. Incredible stuff. I think that's the most connected thing they've done in the whole match. Just turning each other over in sequence. They're trying to gyro dance back onto their wheels. Only one succeeds. Oh dear! Right into the ground! <laughs> Well, connect, but let's not ignore the other half of Connect and still delivering a good blow there to Spinny Boy, who on the whole isn't really going anywhere. Oh, it isn't, but I think in this case, being quite quiet and calm might actually help Spinny Boy, because Connection is destroying itself here. Uh, over goes one again. Is one of the cluster bots done there? No. Gyro's back over as Spinny Boy connects with another hit. Can the cluster bots finally get go going? Back over again. Oh my. Oh, that's a big hit, and that's another half of the front plow gone. And Spinny Boy has been spun up by the kill saws. Could this fight yet turn? In behind, and I a just good can't jab. I can't believe that Spinny Boy is still in one piece. They've taken so many hits to critical areas. Either they're superbly armored, or connection is just lacking in power somewhat. Oh! oh, it's counted! It's counted in the end! And Spinny Boy has delivered a killer blow to Connection! And if I was going to bet on one robot getting split apart in this fight, I have to admit, I didn't think it was going to be Connection. Spinny Boy fights on, they still have one active cluster bot, but you have to think the judges will be favouring Spinny Boy now. Certainly. Well, this has been one of the most incredible fights I think I've ever witnessed. No control from either. No damage from the machine you'd expect on the machine you thought was defenseless. And incredibly, we end with something that I can't even talk about. What an incredible fight for all the wrong reasons. And who on earth is going to win? Look at that direct blow from Connection straight to the wheel. You'd expect the fight to be done there and then, but that's not how it went. We got a full three minute classic with one of the Connection Twins completely split apart. Spinny Boy must have an advantage on the damage category, but a little more control from Connection should be a close one. The judges' results are in. The winner by split decision is... Connection! And with another very close judges decision tonight, Connection will move on to the round of 16. Spinny Boy will have to fight again in the wildcard rumbles. It's time for our final fight of the night, where we will see Umi Ryu take on Wow Plow. It's a classic fight that every robot combat fan loves, a powerful spinner versus a powerful wedge. Umi Ryu's spinner seems to give an immediate advantage, especially with Wowplow's exposed wheels, but it is unstable, meaning that Wowplow, a robot with a stunning 92 defense, should be able to tank and shove around Umi Ryu with ease. This battle certainly comes down to one thing, and that's driving, meaning that both robots have their work cut out for them if they want to move on to the next round. Ladies and gentlemen, it's robot fighting time! In the red square, from the UK, it's Umi Ryu! In the blue square, from Serbia, it's Wow Plow! My strategy is to essentially stay away from the doors, stay away from the walls, because that's basically the only way I can be killed. He's a flipper, he can't really do much damage to me, so as long as I can kill him before I'm out of the arena, I'm pretty good. Basically, my strategy right now is to like pressure him, because I know I have like a good enough wedge, so he'll, he won't be able to hit me properly.
ever heard of a flipper called Wow Wow? Well, it's here! And a big early impact there between Umi Ryu and Wow Plow, which is the flipper machine in this fight. Yeah, Umi Ryu already tearing oh. the panel off the top of its opponent and getting launched back in response and balancing on its tail into the spinner, <laughs> into the grinder! Well, I was going to say that Wow Plow looks vulnerable in terms of wheels, but the armor went flying, but it really is fighting back well here. Umi Ryu getting shotted about the place completely now tries to stabilize itself and come on to an attack. Finally charge up that spinner because once again it certainly wasn't hesitant in going straight in there right off the bell and now it's just throwing itself off the defensive wedge of Wow Plow, struggling to gain traction by the looks of things. It can't seem to move in a straight line properly. Yeah, I'm not too sure if that tail of Umi Ryu is actually causing it problems here. Some would argue it's a secondary weapon, as it gets a rather lucky clip there via the floor flipper. Another attack as it goes up this time though, and then knocks Wowplow aside. A really interesting, even battle so far though. I, uh, I'd love to see that all the secondary weapons! <laughs> well, that's one way to be a flipper, and another! And here it comes with the side. No. No variable valve on this one, just throwing itself all the way over, but actually launching a really good attack there on Umi Ryu, barreling it back towards the arena wall. Nice the arena flipper, I wouldn't come out if I were you, unless you want to get the hazard oh. of the arena torn up again, thrown onto the flames, and Umi Ryu actually colliding with the back of the flipper. I hope it's strong enough to take that kind of impact. Yeah, the spinner's still going, holding up pretty well, and so is that front of Wow Play, really resilient. And hasn't taken oh, any more damage until that and moment. And it comes. It's still getting reflected around the various pieces of the arena, but wow, I'm not letting it affect oh. it until it runs straight into the blade of Umi Rai losing a wheel and getting thrown over in the process. And now suddenly things are looking very, very good for Umi Rai. Oh, that's the big hit. I was going to say. We've seen the wow, and there goes the plow. <laughs> Well, <laughs> and there it goes again! It's normally spinners that uh, fall apart during a fight, but it's Wow Plow that's uh, looking a little bit less resilient in terms of weaponry because it's not got any anymore! I mean, there's no Plow about it, it's just called Wow! Yeah, and that's exactly what Umi Ryu has been over the course of this fight. It's still not the most stable, but it's certainly the most destructive here. Can it finish it off? It's certainly going to need to because Umi Ryu still posing a threat and Cease is called wow. at the end of the battle. And it's going to go to a judge's decision. Indeed. Should be a clear winner, but we'll see. Well, it was a novel effort from both machines always remaining competitive, but Umi Ryu was the one causing all of the damage to Wow Plow and its front wedgelets and the top panel as well. Good flips were achieved but damage does carry the most weight in a judge's decision. We'll have to see. The judge's results are in. The winner by unanimous decision is... Umi Ryu! And so, the second night of the qualifying round comes to an end. We've seen Sparks, Sea Devil, Connection, and Umi Ryu move on to the round of 16. We will see the losers soon in the wildcard rumbles. From all of us here at Bashbots, we thank you so much for watching and we hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you all soon when the qualifying round concludes, but until then, good night.